Okay, everyone, welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. I'm going to go through with you a couple of pointers about the year one KC content. Now, first thing about KC is effectively what we're looking at here is what the magnitude of KC is and what it can tell us. So we can learn a little bit about an equilibrium based on its KC value. KC is effectively a ratio of the products compared to the reactants. It always has to be this way up. And we know that an equilibrium can actually be set up and approached from either side but you must make sure that you assume for the exam the products are always whatever appears on the right hand side and the reactants are always what appears to be written on the left hand side. Don't try and overcomplicate things. Now these also have to be the square kind of bracket because that represents a concentration of that particular component of the equilibria and next year you'll be calculating, so this is in year two, you'll be calculating that concentration and without square brackets it could be anything. For the year one exams, you will be given concentration at equilibrium values. What you also need to know about Kc is that only temperature can affect it. So when we talk about a Kc value changing, we only ever describe that Kc would change if the temperature had been adjusted. So temperature can be adjusted for an equilibrium and make it shift to the left or the right hand side. And that is what changes Kc. Pressure has its own expression called Kp, which we do in year two, and the concentrations are consequential based on temperature and pressure. We don't worry about what happens to a Kc or Kp if we start mucking about with the concentration values alone. Let's have a look at an example how we write a Kc expression. So first off, if we are asked to state the Kc expression or write the Kc expression for a particular equilibrium, all we have to do is take the products and you write them out separately and you're timesing them together on the top part here and you divide that by the reactants like so. There's no powers of here outside the square brackets because nothing had a coefficient in the balancing of the above equation. If you look at a second example though for this one, so this would be uh, dioxide and trioxides of sulfur. For this one we write Kc and this is going to equal, I'm going to write this one a little bit differently just so I can label it up. We're going to have our products, which is the SO3, and it's going to be divided by our reactants, which is the SO2 times the O2. Now, what we're missing here, the fact that we've now got coefficients in our equation, the 2 here in front of the SO3 means that the SO3 goes to the power of 2. So the concentration value we are given by the question needs to be squared inside this expression. And the 2 here in front of the SO2 means that the SO2 value also gets squared. And so the value we're given by the question has not been squared yet and would need to have that calculation done to it in order to be used in the Kc expression should we be asked to calculate a value of Kc. So now what? Well, the Kc value then can actually tell us quite a bit. The bigger the Kc is, and by bigger I mean when it's greater than 1, tells us that the equilibrium lies more to the right hand side. Whereas if the Kc value appears to be less than 1, then this tells us that the equilibrium lies to the left hand side. You won't be given a value where the Kc actually equals 1. Well, of course, that would mean that it's slap bang in the middle. Now, the further to the right hand side it gets, the bigger the Kc gets. So for example, an equilibrium with a Kc of 1000 is further to the right hand side in terms of its balance than a Kc with a, a value of 3. All right, that's simple. They may ask you in the exam, what does the magnitude of Kc tell us? And that's all they're getting at. They're just saying how the size of Kc can tell us the position of the equilibrium. Now, what they also want you to know is how Kc can increase and decrease based on a shift. Now, I'd like to remind you at this point that it is only temperature that can ever affect the value of Kc. We don't um, see anything else affect the value of Kc, even though other things can affect the position of equilibrium. And if we ever, for instance, see a shift to the right-hand side, then Kc will always increase. Whereas if we ever see a shift to the left hand side, Kc will always decrease, it will always go down. Now a little bit more detail then about perhaps this one here, the shift to the right hand side, why does it do that? Well, If you think about what the Kc expression looks like, products divided by reactants, if you shift to the right hand side, you are favoring production of the products. And so what that means is this value here is gonna go up, 
and you are using up more reactants by shifting to the right hand side you're increasing the rate of that reaction ahead of that of going to the left and so your reactants amount is going to go down and so this is as simple as considering 2 over 2 now suddenly becoming 3 over 1 and we can see of course that this would increase our value of Kc Mathematically, we can actually describe in the chemistry exam as these, as the numerator and the denominator, if you don't want to talk about the specific concentrations of the products or the reactants. You can put it in either context, but you need to make sure you're aware of the expression and how those numbers can change and adjust the value of Kc. I hope that clears up some of the pointers about the year one standard of Kc that you expected to know for the OCRA specification in chemistry. I'll leave you to it. Happy revising.